When listening to their sound, you can feel the effect as you enter a new realm of consciousness with altered visions beyond comprehension. After all, we are Blood Incantation. Maybe more than any other style of music, death metal is the most divisive. With virtually all beings on this you know, decrepit universe either loving it or hating it. And even those who do love it will instantly find themselves in a heated debate at any given corner regarding this you know, sector of bloody music. At first, Thought. You may be thinking to yourself, well, how is that possible? After all, isn't death metal just really fast noise with the singer yelling at me? For some, that can be it. After all, just like psychedelics, it can be a really healthy form of release, especially for men, you know, with that whole testosterone thing. But then there are the others. Bands like Blood Incantation, who are always looking to experiment, push, and retransform, rethink what our understanding of what music can be, not just death metal, but rather the very fabric of music, reality, reality and consciousness. And consciousness. Metalheads, welcome to Graphic Metal, where metal is celebrated with design in mind. I'm Vir Von Wright, and this episode is episode one in our three-part episode series on the band Blood Incantation. With this episode focusing on the musical journey of the band up to this point, as with how they came to be and what they ultimately seek. Episode 2, which if it's already available, will pop up with a link here now, also in the description, otherwise you have to wait in a couple of days, will be on the mysticism, story, and message of the band, along with their design and branding, plus the keys to their success. As with... Graphic Bell will showcase all our newly created designs we did for the band, including reimagining all their album covers and a graphical take of their logo, plus reimagining our own Graphic Metal logo as if we were a death metal band. And episode three, The Meditation, which for that one we'll leave as a mystery for now, but same thing applies. If it's already available, boom, and also description, otherwise we'll come in a few days. And one more big announcement. We are giving away a Blood Incantation Absolute Elsewhere limited edition box set, which includes three discs plus Blu-ray of both Absolute Elsewhere and Luminous and Bridge, as with the All Gates Open uh, documentary film and book. Plus, not to mention our own graphic metal newly created designs we did for the band. So stay tuned to find out how you can win. Now, on to the musical journey of Blood Incantation. So strap in, because things are about to get, well, weird. As it seems with this band, what they really seek is to better understand what it means to be human and to expose ideas in our history that have been hidden for fear of what they might teach us. It's as if they are behavioralists, leveraging the power of music to seek these humane and astrological questions about the universe and the creatures that occupy within it. You know, given that I don't appear like a metalhead, people are always saying that, 
People are also always, you know, quick to ask me, you know, why do I choose metal music? Why do I like it so much? And I've always told them the same thing. It's not because it's, you know, heavy. It's because of their willingness and ability to equip anyone who dares to listen with talent, creativity, emotion, and you know, authenticity. You want the truth? Don't listen to pop. If you want creativity, don't listen to country. You want talent? Don't listen to hip hop. You want emotion? Don't listen to electronica. Whatever emotional, you know, astral state that you seek, metal always has you covered. After all, remember, our lives on the surface of this planet may come with a beautiful layer of skin, but underneath, it's bloody. To be human is both life and death. The universe itself is made like through light from darkness. And it's polar opposites that power literally everything. This is why death metal is so valuable to so many people. But the fact that Blood Incantation offers you a path to all these thoughts, emotions, and all well, therapeutic sessions, all without having to ever change this, now that is otherworldly. And as if this wasn't poetic enough for you, in preparation of this episode, I re-listened to all of Blood Incantation, and once I finished, I kid you not, Spotify suggested and played this song for me. The song is Lover by Damien Adore. The poetry of this universe is on full display and in motion with Blood Incantation. I of course was immediately curious, so I let Spotify continue, and it was clear that, well, Blood Incantation broke the algorithm. It had no clue what to do. I don't know about you, but this is the sort of music that I want to listen to. All of this leads us to Blood Incantation, who possess just as many characteristics of the likes of Pink Floyd, Metallica, or the Beatles as they do Morbid Angel, Gargots. So who is this band? Blood Incantation is an American band coming by the caves of Denver, Colorado, forming in 2011, consisting of members Paul Riddell on guitars and vocals, Isaac Falk on drums, Morris Colin, Colin Pariski on guitars, Jeff Barrett on fretless bass. They released three demos and an EP from 2013 to 2015, leading to their debut album entitled Star Spawn in 2016. And immediately, from the moment Paul screams and the rest of the band lay down a punishing riff, it was clear on impact that this band was clearly going to be, well, different. The album showed us that they were indeed inspired by you know, the OGs of Death and Morbid Angel, but also was intrigued by the thrashers like Exodus and Metallica. The first song, uh, Vertification of Blood, Part 1, is an epic 13 plus minute escape to another dimension. It's death, rash, and paw fused together into one song with equal parts devastating heavy riffs, tempo change, and guitar melodies that will touch your soul, quite frankly. The very reason why people love 
epic, you know, sci-fi and fantasy novels is the art of escapism, and it's on full display here. And it didn't stop there. On part two, track three, and track four, just like the title indicates, meticulous soul devourment. They introduce synthesizers to expand on their you know, soundscapes and ability to take us even deeper into the well of our consciousness, only to then slap and yell at us to wake up with another dosage of of death. And just like the last guitar note that, you know, like fades into the ether. But it had all listeners demanding more and critics gushing over this band. Still to this day, it is regarded one as one of the best modern death metal bands there is. Three years later, the anticipated sophomore release, Hidden History of the Human Race in 2019, was unveiled. And it picked up exactly where they left off by combining that same, you know, old school 90s death metal with psychedelic, prog like multi layer soundscapes and synthesizers, even throwing in some spoken word for the first time. The album in many ways is very similar to the debut, but reversed the layout, opting this time around for the, you know, the epic song to be the closer. And in many ways it's even actually longer, as track 4 inner inner path to outer space, which is essentially an instrumental plus just one long belting brawl. Uh, just, which by the way, it sounds like it was written by Cliff Burton, FYI. Essentially, it acts as like the intro to that closer, which is awakening from the from the dream of existence to the multi-dimensional nature of our reality, mirror of the soul. Also, probably in the running for one of the longest song titles ever. <laughs> and with it came, you know, similar similar you know critical acclaim and a lot more attention. For a seemingly death metal band, at this point, their popularity was sky high. And once again, ending the album as if it were an episode of Twin Peaks, with a mind-bending cliffhanger, with the last four minutes or so, transitions from like death metal to an emotional, melodic solo, followed by a solar wind sound, and then into a gentle and peaceful acoustic section to again fade into the ether of space and time, making us ponder, what will be next? Three years later, and to everyone's shock, they released Time Wave Zero in 2022, and just as confusing as that time was, so was everyone else's reaction to this one. An entirely synth ambient soundscape with two songs, IO and EA, broken down into four movements for each, is an interesting journey into the cosmos of space. And whereas many have been very confused by it and question if it is in line with, you know, keeping under the brand name of Blood Incantation. The way I interpret it is like, it's like a form of like preparation or a warning. Like, hey everyone out there in the galaxy, we know you think that we're a death metal band, but actually we're not. And things are about to change. Going completely were the, you know, the, the anger, violence, and the desire to reassert the technical death metal on top of this, in favor of the other side of clearly the band's, you know, mission. After all, they call themselves cosmic death metal for a reason. Deep down, I think that everyone saw this or thought that this probably would come. Just like the R cover shows us with the, the rise of the moon, you know, coming closer into view as the night carries onward. The sound is cold and distant. That unsettling, unfeeling aura, you know, was once in the background, right? It now is in the foreground and acts as like a telescope 
through which we can, you know, stargaze into this new plane of existence. It feels like watching an old science fiction film where mysticism reigns supreme. They tapped into, quite frankly, spirituality and ex existentialism and showcased all their love for Pink Floyd as it goes with them. Everything was recorded uh, straight to the track with, you know, no overdubs, which made it feel more like intangible and real, something that we can hold on to. It may not have had the same you know, impact as the first two. This is sort of what happens whenever you, you know, do something so polarly opposite. Personally, I think over time, it will become almost like nostalgic, like a moment in time to be remembered. At the very least, it once again suspended us in curiosity as to what was next. What was next was the bridge between those two worlds, the ambient cosmic spirit of curiosity and the brutal death of spirit of reality, or simply the intersect of where life and death cross. The EP Luminescent Bridge was released in 2023, just two songs in obligatory of the Eclipse and Luminescent Bridge allowed them to explore and showcase this you know, new direction that they were planning to move and explore into. Uh, the Fuse is ultimately their two you know, spirits. Look, you can't say that this band has never prepared us, which again, I think actually drives home their spirituality, right? I mean, this because it's kind of like the core principle of spirituality, right? Like we're human, where we can't like, you know, shift our emotions from one space to another that quickly. We have to prepare ourselves, our mind, our body, our spirit to you know, welcome that change. Which leads us to... We interrupt this broadcast with an important message to all of you out there in the ether. We are giving away a Blood Incantation Absolute Elsewhere limited edition box set, which includes three discs plus Blu-ray of both Absolute Elsewhere and Luminous and Bridge and the All Gates Open documentary film and book. Not to mention giving away our own newly created graphic metal designs and merch for this Blood Incantation series. Find out more on episode two in our three-part episode series on Blood Incantation and the mysterious Stargate Research Society. Now, we bring you back to your scheduled program. Their latest, entitled Absolute Elsewhere, which literally is absolutely elsewhere, and is sure to be unlike, quite frankly, anything you've ever heard before. The name actually comes from uh, the short-lived uh, British prog rock band from the 70s, which interestingly enough, actually were signed to Warner Brothers Records by M.D. Derek Taylor, the former Beatles, Beatles publicist and manager of Apple Records. But after they de debut in Search of Ancient Gods, released in 76, with the rise of punk and the other, you know, this sh sudden shift, fittingly for the threat of this, you know, where we're at right now, the label refused to release their sophomore release, Playground, which had gone unreleased for nearly 50 years until finally, earlier this year in May, finally, was released. 
Again, it seems fitting for Blood Incantation to do this for many reasons, you know, now knowing this, but if nothing else, it can be looked at as again a warning or an announcement that, hey, we're now a prog rock band. As described by the band themselves, Absolute Elsewhere is our most potent audio extract musical trip yet. Like the soundtrack to Herzog-style sci-fi epic about the history of battle for human consciousness itself by a 70s prog uh, album played by a 90s death metal band from the future. It essentially combined everything that they've done up to this point. The album's you know, and and well, and actually, just like Time Wave Zero, right? There's it, there's two songs, with each song being you know over 20 minutes long in length, broken down into three segments, which were also called tablets. The band also indicates spending over 9,000 euro just on a synthesized equipment to record this album, and it shows right away with the first sonic sound bubble note that burst into into our ears uh, as the first tablet of the Stargate. And the two minutes in, in, you know, transitions into like almost like a like synth reggae-like sound before a helicopter comes in as if it was like from the famous uh, scene of Apocalypse Now even a full-fledged 70s prog synth solo chimes in at the four-minute mark, and by the time the you know that ends, then a guitar solo washes over us. And if you didn't know any better, you would think that you're listening to "Time" by Pink Floyd. And then back to more brutal death metal. Also worth noting that Paul's like screaming death metal growls has actually improved quite a lot. Even for casual fans who are really just coming into this for the prog side of things, they'll probably be able to tolerate this, which is, you know, kudos to him. Tablet 2 is an ancient, ambient, instrumental soundscape that's kind of very similar to the Luminescent Bridge from the previous EP, more so than the Time Wave Zero, as yes, it first starts off in that ambient way, but it evolves to include acoustic guitars and flute before bringing back like that foundational riff that acts almost like as the bridge to bind all the tablets into one song being the Stargate. Worth noting that uh, Thoriston of Tangerine Dream actually makes an appearance in this. Tablet 3 is like a prog metal band's wet dream. Kind of like in the vein of Between the Barry the Moon. The Egyptian-like tribal drumming from Isaac adds just another layer of depth to the song and smartly binds the branding and the theme as captured also on the album cover with the pyramids. The other thing to call attention to this one is the like lightning quick solo transitions by Paul and Morris along with the devastating heavy riffing. One of the things I personally love about this band is their ability to end songs and albums in a creative way. Just listen to this one and you will understand what I'm talking about. I just love the, the variety and their ability to truly understand and take the time to understand what, the, what is the music and what is the most optimal way to relate it to well, the next song or, you know, to end it uh, as far as an album. On to then song two, The Message, with Tablet One. It continued that prog death metal onslaught, changing direction, directions like eight freaking times, but in particular introduces another new style, uh, and that being Doom, with which transitions into Tablet 2, where they almost kind of sound like a stoner rock band, and for the very first time, Paul sings. And a valid effort, might I say. It will be interesting to see, you know, where if he adds more singing into uh, to the band looking looking ahead. It will be interesting. And again, as I already said, their ability 
culture transition is so freaking strong. This song beautifully builds and builds and builds until it unleashes the close. Tablet 3, which begins by being both that prog rock and death metal at the same time. But when Isaac's drumming sequence comes in at like the halfway point, the band yet again introduces yet another style into their arsenal, melodic death metal, as if they were having a mark. And when that synth solo kicks in at the 8 minute part, you feel so filled, honestly with emotions, you think you're gonna cry. Just in time for them to feed you exactly what you need to hear, as if they anticipated and knew that's exactly what was going to happen. With the, th with the last 3 minutes slowly fading to a gentle, peaceful wave of ambient noise as if you were meditating, next to a river and an ocean to reflect on what you just experienced before, again, in the classic way as they always want to do, adding a thunderstorm that fades to black to build back the suspense and ponder what is next. From the deep darkness of the cosmos, we now bring you back to reality. That is, until their next monolith and chapter arrives, or our own next episode in our three-part series on the band, which will come in a few days, or depending upon when you're watching this, may already be available, in which case the link to that will pop up on your screen in just a moment. Reminder, this episode, episode one, was on the music. Episode two will be on the brand new design and story as with showcasing our own newly created designs we did for the band and episode three, which will be, well, a mystery. Good luck on our contest. Hint, you might want to watch all of the episodes. Graphic Metal thanks you, Blood Incantation, as with everyone out there who has made it this far. We hope you enjoyed it. Let us know what you thought, as with sharing your own memories of this band. Until next time, I'm Vitor Von Wright. You've been watching Graphic Metal. Cheers and keep on rocking.